So when we install our server, brand new server installed, it has one role kind of sort of installed, and that's the file and storage services, and that's what we're seeing right here. Now, roles and features are different functions that your server will perform in the network. So a role is typically a function that it will provide for the rest of the network. So Active Directory, DNS serving, DHCP serving, web serving, things like that are roles. Features are things that are associated with the server that are kind of like support. They're not necessarily something that will be used by uh, other devices on the network, but they will support those. So a very common example is cluster services. Cluster services is a feature that allows us to cluster multiple servers together for failover and redundancy. So, and in some cases for load balancing, if we're doing a load balancing cluster. So, that isn't necessarily a role that's going to be served to the rest of the network, but it's a feature that this server and then other servers will use in order to help support that role. So, there's a couple of primary ways that we'll do this. In the GUI, which is where we're at right now, we will do it through Server Manager. We can also do it through PowerShell using the Add Windows Feature, Remove Windows Feature commandlet. So let's go to manage and right here we have two different things add roles and features and remove roles and features. This is kind of a key. We don't have one place to go to do both. We'll go to a different place depending on what we want to do. So let's walk through adding a role and feature here real quick. So this brings us to our little add roles and features wizard. We're going to click next. All right, the type, role or feature-based installation or remote desktop services installation. Now, this is only used in a VDI, virtual machine or session-based desktop environment. So this type of environment, VDI stands for virtual desktop infrastructure. So in this type of environment, you would have dumb terminals instead of actual smart workstations that people will use. It would be a dumb terminal. They'd be connecting to a session or terminal on your server in order to run things. Now, that's the only time we will use this. So like 98% of the time, we're doing roller feature-based installation. And we'll click Next. All right, server selection. Now, I only have one server here. But if I was managing multiple servers, I'd gone to, you know, manage and add new servers if I was managing multiple servers, I could pick the server that I wanted from the list down here, which becomes very convenient because it allows me to go one place and now I can deploy roles on other servers or features. Now, I also have the option up here, I can select a virtual hard disk. So if I'm running a virtual machine, now the virtual machine has to be shut down in order for this to work. Uh, other than that, it'd be, you know, through a server pool. But if I have a virtual machine shut down, I can pick the virtual hard disk and I can install a role into that VHD. So this will sometimes use if we are setting up a VHD that we're going to clone for multiple deployments in a, um, in a virtual environment. And that can be very convenient. So we just select the target. We're going to go with a server from the server pool and we're going to use this one. And I'm going to click Next. And then you're going to see here server roles and features. Now remember, roles are things that we serve to the rest of the network. So Active Directory Certificate Services, Domain Services Federation, Lightweight Directory Services, you see a whole bunch of them here. And so we pick the role that we want. And I'm going to choose Remote Access here. So I'm going to click on my little checkbox for Remote Access, and I've now chosen that role. Now when you do that, notice this has changed. So now I have Remote Access and Remote Access Services have now been added to my little list here. So I'm going to click Next. All right, remember, features are things that are not specifically related to a role, but you see failover clustering, containers, NFS clients, whole bunch of different things that we can do here. By the way, you can do a feature without doing a role. You can install a role without installing a feature. Anything like this, you'll see where it has this little arrow. You can click that, and that means there are things down below it. And then anything checked means it's already installed. Okay. So we'll click Next because I'm not going to add a specific feature. So here's my remote access, tells me a little bit about it. Click Next. And now, role services are services that get added to a specific role. So a role, I'm doing remote access, and then how do I want to do remote access? What are the actual services I want as part of it? Direct access and VPN, routing, web application, proxy, what have you. 
So I'm just going to I'm going to do direct access and VPN. Now, in order for that to work, I'm going to need to add a handful of features. So it's going to give me those features and it'll say, do I want to automatically add them? And then I have the option here to include management tools if needed. I'm going to just click add features and that's going to add all of it. Now I actually want to go back up here to my features thing because I want to show you something here real quick. And that is this. The remote server administration tools are also called RSAT. The remote server administration tools, these are the management tools that we'll use for different roles or different features. Now, this becomes useful. Remember in the previous video, I was talking about managing a server that has a role on it different from the roles that I have on this one. So I can add, let's say I was going to manage a DHCP server, I could add in my DHCP server management tools from here. So that becomes really convenient. You can also, by the way, download RSAT for your Windows client, which means on your Windows client PC, you can put the server manager, the remote server admin tools, and use it to connect across the network to your servers and manage them without having to access your servers. All right, let me skip on ahead here. We've added our role services. Now, when we did that, we also needed IIS, so we're gonna, we added that in. And then I can choose the role services I want, and some of these are automatically selected because Server Manager knows if I'm going to do remote access VPN, these are the services that I want. I can add more if I want to. I don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and then Install. Now, I actually skipped past one thing. There was a checkbox up here that said Restart Server Automatically if Required. I did not select that. Uh, we're just doing the install without that. Typically, I will not select that unless I know that I'm the only one on this server. Now, without that selected, if I do need to reboot, then it will tell me, hey, we need to reboot in order for this to happen. Okay, now at this point, I can go ahead and close this, and the install is going to continue on in the background. You'll see up here, this is my notifications area, and you'll see I have one existing notification. So if I click on that, it'll tell me we're doing a feature installation on server 146. Now I can just ignore that, and it will continue to happen in the background, and then I can go back in and check on it whenever I want to. Now, something you will also see happen occasionally, you'll see your notifications up here. You'll also sometimes see a little yellow triangle right here. And that typically means there's a warning of some indication. One of the most common warnings that you're going to run into is it will tell you that we completed an install and we have to do some post-deployment configuration. So that post-deployment configuration typically means we need to do some additional things now that we've installed that particular role or feature. And so you'd be able to select here, it would say post-deployment configuration, click here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video. We're gonna give this thing a few minutes to finish. And then once it gets done, we're gonna come back and look at it a little bit more. And we're gonna talk about how to remove a role or feature as well. Okay, so my installation has now completed, and it doesn't really tell me much, except you see I still have my notification up here. So I'm going to come back to my notifications, and it says, hey, feature installation, installation succeeded, or was, installation succeeded. There we go. Not succeeded successfully, although it did that too. Okay, so when I'm done with this, this will just kind of stay here as a little notification, but I really don't want my notifications cluttering things up. So to get rid of the notification, you come here and click your X to remove task. Now, if it required post-deployment configuration, you're going to see that link down here. And then you'll be able to click on that and do the post-deployment configuration there. Okay, so that's how we use... What are you, server manager to remove roles and features? All right, so now we have a little notification here. This seems a little bit more serious. And there we go. All right, here's our post deployment configuration. Configuration required for direct access and VPN. Open the getting started wizard. And so if I were actually setting it up, I'd click that and go through that uh, wizard to do what I needed to get done. Now, in this case, I actually want to take those back out. So I'm going to go back to Manage, and this time I'm going to go to Remove Roles and Features. Now, this is the exact same thing as adding roles and features, only backwards. So we're going to click on Next. Same thing, we can do it from a virtual hard disk, a server from the pool, this server, or any other servers that we're managing. 
please note, just like adding roles and features, I have to manage it before I can um, remove roles and features from it. Now, I don't want remote access, so I'm going to click on it. And yes, I want to remove features and remove the management tools if applicable. And then I want to remove the web server. Okay. Now, I've selected the things that I want to be removed. Notice I can't add anything. That's all grayed out. I do have my ability to click my drop downs and, un and select or unselect specific things that I want to remove. In this case, I just want to take them all off. So I'm going to click Next, Next, and then here again, restart the destination server automatically if required. I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked and just click Remove. Now, just like the add roles, adding roles and features, I can leave this up here if I want to. Or I can close it and I'll still have access to it via my notifications, which will still tell me when it gets done. Or I can just sit here and watch the progress indicator. It just depends on if you want to sit here and watch it or walk away but be able to glance back and see very quickly if it's done or not. Or, you know, just minimize it and I'm going to do a few other things on the server and I'll come back and check on it when I'm done with the other things that I need to do. So that's, in a nutshell, how we're going to add and remove uh, roles and features on a server using the Windows Server Manager.